Asbury University is the epicenter of what God is about to be doing worldwide, and that as we, in the future, look back, they're going to be tracing their roots back to this thing that has broken out just wow. recently. Uh-huh. So this is an epicenter. And when you have an epicenter, you're often talking about an earthquake. <laughs> so there's a shaking. Spiritual earthquake. There's a shaking that's going yeah. on, uh-huh. and it's shaking the flesh out of the way so that we can walk in the Spirit. Yeah which is what God wants us to do. Yeah. This is all about getting us over our flesh and walking in the Spirit so that we will fulfill that which he sent us to this planet to do, to be a part of his activities in these days. Yes. It's exciting. <laughs> God promises in Joel 2.28 to pour out His Spirit on all humanity. Welcome to Global Outpouring, where we contend for that promised outpouring, and we equip for that outpouring so that we may engage in that very outpouring. I'm Philip Buss. And I'm Sharon Buss. Welcome to the podcast today. We are so glad that you are with us. Philip and I have just returned from Asbury University where we went to see what the Holy Spirit was doing. And we want to share what we have seen of the Asbury outpouring. Welcome to the podcast today. We're so glad that you are with us. This is going to be a wonderful discussion that that Philip and I are going to have about our experiences in Asbury and with outpourings in the past and and what we're expecting in the future as we are preparing for that mighty outpouring on all humanity. But before we get started, we want to invite you, if you have not already done so, to go to our website, globaloutpouring.net. And there's lots of things that you can do there, but You can give us feedback there. We'd love to hear from you. Or you can email us at feedback at globaloutpouring.org. And we'd love to hear what what the Lord is doing in your life, especially if if, uh, this podcast is somehow helping you or if there's something you would like for us to talk about or or explore with you on, on this podcast. We would love to hear from you. And you can also do all sorts of other things, especially look at what we have coming up for events. We've got some amazing things that are on the calendar, and I think there's things that you will be interested in joining in with us, especially if you can come here to the beautiful Ozark Mountains. We're going to be having some glorious times. So, Philip, we were on a journey already uh, starting February 1st. we we got word that my pastor from uh, when I was, uh, I guess, 18 years old, um, briefly, he was my pastor, and uh, he spent time with us lots and lots of times here at this ministry, very close to this ministry, Robert Dorn. Um, he passed away uh, the previous Saturday, and we felt that we were supposed to go to his memorial service in Florida. So we went there and followed the leading of the Holy Spirit and visiting with, with different ones, members of our ministry in, in uh, Jacksonville in particular and, and in Atlanta on our way home. And as we were, we, we were just one day away from home <laughs> and uh, we kind of thought, well, maybe we just need to go and check out what's going on at Asbury. Because we'd heard things. We'd heard about this outpouring there that they're calling it the Asbury Revival or the Asbury Awakening. And uh, what what were you thinking about going there? I was originally thinking, you know, we're we're going to have moves of God and our meetings coming up. Mm -hmm. But this was just something different. It was just taking off. And it's it's different when there is um, just you know, maybe the Spirit of God is poured out on this place or that place. But something like this, this was uh, the way it happened. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden, you know, you can see the video clips out there of the, of the message the man gave. And, and, but nobody, very few people know the groundwork, you know, before this event actually happened. Yes. There's not many that know the groundwork uh, the, the ground that was plowed spiritually yes. for what was going to happen. Yes. And we didn't even know all of that ourselves at that quite at that point. 
But it was the morning, okay, do we go home or do we go to Asbury? Mm-hmm. And I just look at, you know, look at the mileage going home and stuff. I thought, you know, I think we really need to be at Asbury. Mm-hmm. And I knew we were looking at long lines and things like that. But I thought, you know, this is something that, that we really need to be part of. Yes. Because we, we've seen um, numerous revivals in the past, but this is different because it was yes. on the youth. Yes. And, you know, when, when we traveled with, with our founder, Gwen Shaw, she was a revivalist. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we saw revival everywhere we went. Mm. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't something that was new to us, but that is our heart. You know, God gave us this Joel 228 mandate that that it's it's something that is on this ministry to be pressing for contending yeah. for this outpouring and as i was praying about it when we first got our new name um the lord spoke to me very clearly and said don't ask me don't pray for the outpouring ask me for my heart for the outpouring mm. And mm-hmm. so it, it kind of changed my prayer life in, instead of saying, God, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, and, <laughs> which is what I'd been praying for years. Yeah. But now, now he's asking us to ask for his heart. And I think that, uh, that we really saw in, in this move of God, uh, he, we saw his heart. It was hearts changed. Yes. I mean, when, when you think of what students deal with today mm-hmm. compared to what we dealt with, I mean, I, I graduated in 1972 out of high school. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd, I didn't know hardly any people using drugs or nothing in, in our, you know, back then because that was a, such a hidden thing. Mm-hmm. You know, marijuana was just starting to pop up here or there, but I didn't know anybody using drugs. Wow. I knew some that smoked marijuana. You know, but uh, that that was the extent of that. It was, it was just covered up, and can pe- people just weren't all into that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we could go down all kinds of bunny trails yeah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, but so so today, you know, you look at what all this all the junk that's being tossed at you. Mm-hmm. You know, if, and if you don't have a sure foundation in Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to succumb to a lot of this stuff that's out there. It's true. You know, that's so. True. So uh, you mentioned that laying the groundwork. Uh-huh. Um, I think it was just before we got there. No, it was after we got there. When we got there, I had made a little video clip of the of some of the the worship that was going on, and I sent it to a number of people. And one of the people that I sent it to was Sampath Kumar from India, and that man is a revival encyclopedia. <laughs> he yes, uh-huh. knows more about revival history than anybody I know on the planet. And he's that's just he's made it his life study. And so he's very very well connected and he's he sent us the name of a man um that had been praying in Wilmore, Kentucky on the college campus uh praying for revival. God sent him there. His name is Hong Tu Liao. He's from Malaysia. I think he's probably Chinese descent. And uh, his story is that he was a teacher in a Bible school, a, a seminary in Malaysia. And he was, um, he visited Asbury, and I think he visited twice maybe. And then mm-hmm. God called him to quit his job in Malaysia and go to Asbury and pray. Mm-hmm. And so from <laughs> June of 2020 until May of 2022, almost three years, he prayed as though that was his his career, his yeah. job. He he prayed, uh, I'm sure, at least eight hours a day. And he the Lord led him to walk the streets with these signs on him, you know, like cardboard <laughs> signs, like a, you know, he. I think he really felt silly. Uh, that was the impression that I got from from what I'd seen of his testimony. He th- had had signs like "King Jesus died for your sins," "The Third Great Awakening is here," mm-hmm. wow. uh, "Holy Spirit, you are welcome here," "King Jesus is coming for you and for me," uh, "Repent, believe in Jesus, for the kingdom of God is near." You know, you don't think of those kind of things as being something you really want to do. 
uh, <laughs> it's it's the kind of thing that you you'd be just be embarrassed. But God asked, God told him to do this, and he said that it was very difficult for him in the winter. You know, Malaysia is kind of near the equator. Yeah, and it doesn't get cold. There. It doesn't get cold there ever. And he he was having to walk in the in the snow, and God even sent him somebody to give him his gloves so that he could stay <laughs> a little bit warmer. But uh, he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And he he made it clear that God didn't want him to have any pride in this. So he sent him to New York to minister to the poor. Um, on the, I think he has like a street ministry there now. And God just didn't want him to have any touch on what was going on when this thing broke out. Mm. Like, like, look what I did. You know. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's, that's the kind of move that God wants. Mm-hmm. And he's looking for humble hearts. One of the things that we learned about the young people that are involved in this, and I was sent a report that was written by Mark Swayze about the outpouring at Asbury, and I'm just going to refer to a few things that he said. Um, but he he said that there were that there've been like a hundred worship teams by day nine. Wow! We got there on day nine. Uh-huh. We were yeah. there a, a, f- a few hours, three and a half hours on day nine, and two hours on day ten. Not not including the three hours that we stood in, the, in line yeah. <laughs> in the cold and yeah, well, snow watch, flurries. Watching <laughs> snow flurries and you know wind chill of about twenty four degrees. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that's so unique about this move is not just, I mean, there are testimonies, there are testimonies of people's lives being changed, but it's also centered on worship. And they have this, um, this protocol that God gave them that, uh, there's a 24 year old girl who is in charge of this. And, um, they gather early in the morning and they ask Jesus for wisdom in every decision. No decision for worship is human strategy or planning. They pray, ask Jesus, and then discern together. They they speak in turn by raising hands and submitting to one another as they make decisions. All five of them that are on this team had to be united if whenever a decision was made. And then they have a process for collecting the worship teams. The Holy Spirit highlights people in the room. <laughs> then these this this little group that is in charge of this they call themselves worship stewards. And they they ask those students that the Holy Spirit points out to lead a worship band. Now, these are students that may not have even ever worked together, as I understand it. Um, this newly formed worship band gets prayed for in the outside hall and then goes to the consecration room. Wow. Uh-huh. And this is where spirit-filled hidden prayer warriors pray over this newly formed team. This goes on for 30 minutes or more. Uh, This consecration room is for any person who will step on the platform, speakers included. Then the worship team comes back down the stairs, uh, acclimates to the room, and finally, after an hour of preparation behind the scenes, switches out with the team on stage that's been leading. The worship stewards do not want any team to lead worship that has not been prepared in this way. No platform given until ready. This ready can take more than an hour. So here's, here's this question that he asks. Who sits on the worship steward team? You will never know. They're a nameless and faceless generation. And we've heard prophecies of that for years, yeah. that the coming move is yeah. going to be nameless, nameless and, and faceless. faceless. Yeah, that's right. And it's happening. Which means there's not going to be any one person in charge. Yes, and any, there's no stars. Yeah, no, no denomination in mm-hmm. charge. Right. Like we've seen in past moves. Yeah. And and Asbury is actually interdenominational. They're mm-hmm. they're very Wesleyan in, in in their style, in their how shall I say it, their core beliefs. Mm-hmm. So you know, look back to John Wesley, and you'll you'll see that 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 their Methodists came out of Wesleyan. Uh, the, then there's a group called Wesleyans, the Nazarenes, very mm-hmm. evangelical, very holiness centered. Uh, even even the the Pentecostal movement that that came at Azusa Street was basically Wesleyan in its roots. Mm. Yeah. So you know these are these are background things. Yeah. Uh-huh. Background things. E- even Francis Asbury, the one that that um, this university is named for, um, he was a circuit rider that John Wesley sent to America to just go out there and 
preach the gospel. And, and he was very, very strong in his delivery um, when a lot of the circuit riders weren't even living very long because of because conditions, of conditions wild things. animals, um, you know, wild yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, because circuit riders, they would go on their horse, yeah. usually by on a horse, and they just ride from town to town in the right. elements, whatever they are. And, yeah. You know, there wasn't, you couldn't turn on Weather Channel and see what the weather's going to be like next week where you're going. Right. You know, you just, you just went. You yeah. Know. Yeah. And, and radical humility is one of the things that they're mm. stressing. Radical wow. humility. Uh, that's, Amazing. that's what you have to have if you are willing to be nameless and faceless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to get back to, to finish this little piece about these people, um, th these are Gen Z leaders that are rising up before our eyes and Mark Swayze says, we must quickly wake up to the fact that an emerging generation hungers for the supernatural so desperately and rebels against any form of religious entertainment. Ooh, yeah. And, and, uh, and by the way, they're on the ground there, they're calling it an outpouring. Uh-huh, yeah. The Asbury outpouring. And on the caption above the stage, it says, holiness unto the Lord. Yes, yeah, right what, at the top. Yeah. And what's really unique about this this group it's just like up on the stage there's a there's a grand piano up there mm -hmm. and a couple acoustic guitar players and one of those boxes you sit on as a drum and play each mm -hmm. side of it i forget what you call those the cajon i think cajon then and, and up further off one side there's a drum set in a in a big box you know how they box in the, mm -hmm. the drummer but they weren't using that because you know, nope. that's really loud no nope. And the worship was just, it wasn't, there wasn't fast moving, you know, fast moving praise songs. It was worship. Yeah. I mean, there's a song out there that's Michael W. Smith wrote years ago, you know, Honest Day, mm -hmm. you know, hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns and, and then it repeats, you are holy. And, and we stood, when we were standing in line the first night, they were singing that. And they sang that for over an hour, just that one phrase. Mm -hmm. And you could just, I remember one time I just kind of, I could feel like maybe a wave or something. And then all of a sudden it just erupted into this big crescendo. Mm -hmm. it, was you know, it was just astounding how the the Spirit of God was just moving in the worship. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a lot of extra, you know, not like the Toronto revival where there was a lot of manifestations that that people were you know were were doing and this and that or in the Brownsville revival, you know when the power of God fall on people they just shake and all kinds of things but it wasn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. It's like it was giving what people could handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where it wouldn't cause this is not of God because that's what happened in these mm -hmm. other moves and and it was of God and it was of God. But people you know they'll look for anything to criticize. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know these. This this move of God, uh, this outpouring, it, it's on the news channels now. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at them, you know, and C Tucker Carlson gave a, was interviewing <laughs> yes. the president of the student body and inquiring. And, uh, but, you know, it was good. But then one of the other CNN, I think it was, just was very derogatory, you know, which, yeah, which makes sense because that's where <laughs> well, their minds are, you yeah. know, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> But it was it was just astounding to experience yes. this, you know. And that one song went on for forty five minutes or an hour or something yeah, like that. It was we just we were just you could just get lost in worship because it's really all about ministering to Jesus. And that happens a lot of moves sometimes, even for worship leaders if you're listening. Sometimes there's just like one chorus you can just mm -hmm. lock into and the spirit of God breathes on it. Mm -hmm. You just keep as long as he breathes on it. You yes. just keep just keep doing it. It's true. You know, don't be in a hurry to go to the next song. You know? Very true. Very true. So it was. It was just just amazing. It really. And was. then up in the balcony, we were in the balcony both times, you know, and just watching the one spot where the students were just praying for each other up there, and mm -hmm. you know, and then down in the front, there was always people at the altar, and people getting always. prayed for, and yeah. And then there was like a choir behind the worship team of mm -hmm. the students and that, yeah. you know, that were just up there and just kind of just taking Singing it all along. in. Yeah. I, you know, I, I heard someone uh, reporting, it was a young person that had gone there from, from his college. 
And he had never seen revival before. He didn't know anything about what it was like. And the Holy Spirit had spoken to him to go to the altar. He didn't want to, but he did. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the Lord spoke to him and said, this is revival. And, and he's, so he's trying to figure out what, what this is. And, and, he, and the Lord said, look to your left. And here was a student with uh, an older adult praying for the student. And then he said, now look to your right. And here was a student praying for an older person. <laughs> and he said, that's, that's revival. <laughs> wow, that, that's amazing. You know, it's crossing generational lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we need each other. Uh, I, I, was, I was really moved myself. I felt like I was transported back about 50 years <laughs> <laughs> or more. I guess it's more, more than 50 years now. To when I got the baptism in the Holy Spirit on a college campus, um, it was a CFO camp, a camp's farthest out, where it was a very charismatic kind of a church camp, but it was, they always, or at least where, where I was in Michigan, they met on the Alma College campus during the summer. And wow, it, we had such a move of the Holy Spirit with some really supernatural signs. I, I, I was in a prayer meeting in, during that time where we smelled the presence of the Lord. It was, it was just such an amazing fragrance. And when, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, my mother also received it at the same time. And I got one of these crosses that was about three inches tall. Mm-hmm. Then my mother called me her bishop in blue jeans. Bishop in blue jeans. I've never heard you say that before. All these years, I've never heard you say that before. Yeah, I was, I, well, the reason she said that was, you know, she she wasn't from a denomination that w- that had bishops, but she's, yeah. she saw them in India where, where my parents were missionaries. And, and so the bishops would wear a great big cross like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was the only people that she had ever seen wear a cross like that. So that's what she called me. Anyway, I, I was taken back. I was catapulted back into those days where I was one of the young people mm-hmm. that was touched. I, I was only 13, but I was really transformed. The Holy Spirit transformed my life mm. and set me on a path that kept me from getting into lots of things that I shouldn't get. And it's not like I didn't have any backslidden moments, but, but it really pretty much kept me on, on a a track that, you know, I've walked in it all my life and, and, and I've uh I've been involved in, in lots of different revival kind of moves. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this, I can just say, absolutely. This is God. And, and as you said, it was, it's not one of those kind of, um, kind of a thing where you see lots of supernatural things taking place mm-hmm. that we've heard that there were healings, uh, yeah. physical healings and, and um, people being delivered in one way or another. Not a lot of demonstrative things is what I'm trying to say, but it is absolutely a genuine move of God. Yeah. And you get what you expect. I, I knew it was going to be that kind of a move. Mm-hmm. But I wanted more yeah. of God myself, and I've been impacted. Yeah. You know, in the 1970s, when, I, when you got touched— Yeah, it was 71. This, it was a vol- volatile time oh, in yeah. America. You know, I was a sophomore in high school, and, and, I mean, the Vietnam War was not a pretty thing. Mm-hmm. It, I think it was at the tail end, maybe at this point. But, you know, people were, you know, burning their draft cards, you yeah. know, because you got out of—if you didn't go to college or something— I mean, the lottery back then, you know, it wasn't Powerball and all this stuff. The lottery back then, it was, uh, it, it would, um, they'd have 365 balls in a round cage. They'd mm-hmm. spin it and pull a ball out each one at a time. There was a date on it for every date of the year. And the first 90, I think it was, you're sure to go to Vietnam if that was your birthday. You're going to boot camp and then about six weeks you were on the front line fighting the Viet, Viet Cong. Yeah. I mean, like that. And there was riots breaking out Kent State. There was shootings. And mm-hmm. I think Berkeley, I don't know Berkeley, there's a oh, There was all kinds of cities. Kent State, and, I think there, there was, you know, everywhere, demon, anti-government demonstrate. It was volatile time. And the charismatic renewal, which started in about 19, the late 60s, mm-hmm. this was going full swing. But even in our church, I was in a denominational church. It was a 
like it was a Swedish Pentecost, the Swedish Assemblies of God, and there was no, I heard nothing about the charismatic renewal. I have no recollection of, of that movement. And it, was, it wasn't until years later after I got saved I learned more about it. But it, it had such an impact that it didn't touch our denomination. But well, you, every, you already had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in your denomination. But it, it was so wild because when this happened, this move happened, you know, all the, the hippies started, you know, coming out, like in California, coming mm -hmm. off the beaches in their flip-flops, their swimsuits, <laughs> convicted under the whole, by the Holy Spirit to get to church, get saved. And they're going into churches, and the churches did not know what to do with them. It's true. Because it was not business as usual. Yeah. Because they, you know, some of them, they didn't smell nice, you know, <laughs> things like that. You know, they're, they were hippie, you know, hippie flower children. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a total different mindset, and we didn't want them sitting on our pews, you know, and getting their sandy <laughs> sand off their feet under the rugs. And, and a lot of churches turned them all, to, all away. Mm -hmm. But now, fast forward 50 years, we have this new generation, and you have kids coming in with piercings, tattoos, all color hair, all kinds of uh, internet mindsets. That their mind has, you know, they've been shaped by the internet, and all of a sudden God steps in. Mm-hmm. And so this is going to continue, this move of God. It's, you know, it's breaking out on all the campuses. And we even heard they sent one from Ohio State, a van load of kids. I thought, wow, yeah. that's awesome. You know, when they, when they do that and, and a testimony they gave from the 1970s in this move, because uh, the students were going out from this move, you know, which was happening in Asbury. And two of them went, it was a college in California. Do you remember which one that was? At Azusa Pacific. Azusa Pacific, wow. Mm -hmm. And they showed up, I guess, was it Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell that? Yeah, I think you know better I, I than think, I do. I think they were two guys that really didn't, I, they weren't like speaker kind of guys, but they just they just gave a very brief testimony and yeah, the they, Holy they Spirit gave them, fell. I think they said, okay, we'll let them talk for five minutes. Yeah. You know, and, and, they, and the one was just like a minute and a half. The other one was like about three and a half minutes. And then when they were done... The Holy Spirit fell. Yeah, one of the elders or something just got up and just, and he just, and he just started repenting and stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, Spirit yeah. of God came down and took over. Yeah. And I, I remember when Evan Roberts in the Welsh Revival, well, he showed up at this church unannounced with two ladies traveling with him. And he's just crying up in the front, and these two ladies are singing. Oh, well, it could have been any chapel. I'm any not sure chapel which anywhere. Made, it, you know, it really broke out in him. And they just, church, and right? they're just singing, and and the spirit of God came down. And this is a service that might last an hour, something like Normally. that. Normally, and it went till after after six, seven o'clock at night, and people didn't even leave to go to the outhouse to use the restroom. <laughs> and you know, when God's moving, if it takes over your your natural Mm -hmm. Whatever you call it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know that's when the presence of God comes down because the Spirit of God just came in unannounced. They just showed up, and yes. that's what's happening. You know, they and now all these a uh, lot of these colleges all of a sudden this is just exploding everywhere. Yes, yes, that many colleges have or, and universities have sent buses there to Asbury, and they're going home and taking it with them, and yeah. and it's breaking out on college campuses all over. And it was some years ago, there was a prophetic guy out there by the name of Bob Jones. Mm -hmm. He gave a word that when the when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, revival will start. And so we're waiting. And, and so in and 2019, right? 2020. 2020, yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And we were all expecting And we're all this expecting. Great and then COVID, <laughs> you know, it shut everything down. But that was when this man... Uh, Brother Hong started, started walking started around walk saying the, the third great awakening is, is here. here. It already was. Yeah. And, and so here we but are. But now here we are. It so here we are again. a week ago. Yes. You know, yeah, last week or Sunday, the last Sunday, you know, for what we're, we're here now, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I thought, again. is God going to do a repeat? Oh, yes. And when did Asbury break out? It was it, just it was Friday? Just day, no, it was days before the just Super Bowl. Just a few Bowl, days just a two, two or three days before the Super Bowl, you know, all of a sudden this move <laughs> yeah. starts breaking out. I thought, and we're all saying, is, is this going to happen again now? You know, because it didn't really happen the, the first time it got shut down. 
but it's here. It is here. It, it is, is here, and it's real. Here. And we were so blessed to, mm -hmm. just to be up there and just to be a tremendous part of that. Yeah. Uh, also, the background of how this began. We know that prayer was involved, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that Brother Hong was not the only one praying. Yeah. There have been many people that have been praying for revival all over the world, uh -huh. praying for the outpouring, praying for the with expectation that God's going to do something. Nameless, faceless. Yes. Yeah, we'll never and, know them. But this, this man named Zach, who was the speaker that day when, when it broke out in chapel, uh, it was an ordinary chapel service. They, there, there are three chapel services required a week that that the um, all the student body has to attend. It's a requirement if they want to if they want to stay in the school, they got to <laughs> go to the chapel. Amazing. At, and he was preaching or teaching about Romans twelve. There, there were thirteen verses. I think it probably started with verse nine, and it, it's it's about let your love be sincere without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And and he's, he goes on talking about there there are 30 things in these 13 verses that God says to do. And, and one of them, you know, was, well, verse 10 was, be devoted to one another in love. Mm -hmm. One Honor one another above With brotherly yourself. love. Yeah. And he was just pretty well emphasizing that. Yeah. And he yeah. Was, but he was saying, how are you doing with this? Mm -hmm. And you can find this uh, on YouTube. His message is out there on YouTube. How are you doing with this? He says, I, I'm not doing very well this morning with my wife. Yeah, I he had, didn't... <laughs> a, had a tiff with his wife that morning, I guess. I, I, yeah. he, he didn't say it was a tiff, but he, he said, I think he he talked about, you know, one of these things that, that was on the list, that he didn't do well with it, with, just with his <laughs> wife. So it was it was a call to holiness. It was a call to line up with the Word. Uh-huh. And there's a convicting power of yeah. the Holy Spirit uh -huh. that comes to say, ah, "I'm not doing very well." Yeah. And and I I said I said in in church Sunday morning, I've been grieving in my spirit for weeks and months and probably even years about how far short of the glory that I'm falling. Mm -hmm. It's the glory that we're expecting. Yeah. And and I I I saw a thing that. Ivan Tuttle posted, and Ivan Tuttle is going to be here in in March, and I hope you all will come. Go back and listen to his podcast with us a, a, a few weeks ago. If you didn't hear that uh, about the greater glory, releasing the greater glory, mm -hmm. he's going to be coming here. And what he's making comments about this move of God in Asbury, and he said, don't call it a rev revival. This is the glory of God. Mm -hmm. This is the glory. And when he wrote his book, My Journey to Hell, Heaven, and Back, mm -hmm. he said that the Lord showed him the timeline from creation way out into the future. And the Lord showed him that in the 2020s, there was going to be this outpouring mm -hmm. of his glory. And so he said, this is it. This is the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that Brother Honk said was that just like in the Azusa Street Revival, you'll find, and, and the Welsh Revival, you'll find that there are moves of God that have taken place around the earth that will trace their roots back to one of those other revivals. Mm -hmm. You'll see that uh, things that people that are operating now in the supernatural, in in the, the move of God now, many of them were touched in Toronto mm -hmm. or in Pensacola or in, like in 1970 in Asbury. But he said that... that Asbury University is the epicenter of what God is about to be doing worldwide, and that as we, in the future, look back, they're going to be tracing their roots back to this thing that has broken out just wow. recently. Uh -huh. So this is an epicenter. And when you have an epicenter, you're often talking about an earthquake. <laughs> so there's a shaking. Spiritual earthquake. There's a shaking that's going yeah. uh -huh. on, and it's shaking the flesh out of the way so that we can walk in the Spirit, yeah. which is what God wants us to do. Yeah. This is all about getting us over our flesh and walking in the Spirit so that we will fulfill that which he sent us to this planet to do, to be a part of his activities in these days. Yes. It's exciting. Yeah, and it's so exciting how people even got to this this revival. And I was in line talking with some young guys and 
from New Hampshire, and they were construction or something. And uh, they construction said, workers. construction workers, you know, and they said, you know, we, we need to get to that. And, you know, work was over, you know, so it was Friday, I guess, because this was Saturday, one, I think. Or... No, we, we were standing in line on Friday. Oh, okay. So they, they took, they, they took Friday off, I guess. I don't know. But, and so they just left for this, for, uh, for Asbury in their work clothes, you know, yeah. they didn't even change, drove 14 hours straight to, to get there. Yeah. Hey, that's hunger. It you is. Know. It is. Because when you know, there's something about when the Holy Spirit's moving like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, it just, it just has a drawing effect to you, like, you know, like water. You know, mm-hmm. like drawing water draws you. Like looking at waterfalls and waves. You love looking at waves, and and even for us, we were there. But it wasn't until we got home that you, we really, or this morning yes. at church, we really began to feel it. Yeah, I, I thought wow. I've noticed that that since we were there. There's been an increase in spiritual activity in my life. That that there's a a greater ability to focus and a just an impact of the Holy Spirit in me that um, that is reminiscent of some of the other times that that He has moved in my life. And I, and I wanted to say this that when the Lord spoke to me when I was 18 years old, and He said, "I want you, I want you 100 percent, and I want you right now." And I have to say that I, I said yes at that time, and and I did give my life to him, and I did follow him in obedience. There was a, there was I, there was a temptation to say, well, I'll <laughs> I'll wait another year before I serve God. But he had said right now, and honestly, it was decades before I realized that what I was about to do, in just going to college, mm-hmm. which was my original intent, and and the Holy Spirit said, I want you now. Uh-huh. It was decades before I realized that if I had gone that way. It didn't fit with what he had said. Mm-hmm. He had said yeah. now. Yeah. It was like somehow I could talk myself out of that. <laughs> it's like, what part of now do you not understand? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's so good, honey. <laughs> so uh, what, I, what I'm saying is that uh, through the years, since he spoke that to me, from time to time, he comes back and he says, I want you 100%, and I want you right now. And it's like a whole new understanding of what 100% means comes to me. Yeah. And it's just like a deeper dedication. It's a deeper, he's, he's trying to dig deeper in us. He's trying mm-hmm. to put our roots down deeper. And, and I want to say this, that God will take you as far as you are willing to go. Yeah. Uh-huh. You can follow him as far as you're willing to go. But when you once say no, that's enough. Wow. You'll go back down to the last place where you said yes. And that'll be the level that you'll carry. Wow. If you and I've watched it through the years. I've watched it for decades now. When somebody says, No, I'm not gonna do that, that's where their progress stops. So I want to challenge you, listener. You can have more. Maybe you've already been there to the altar and repented of your sins. Or maybe there's a little something you need to deal with. Uh-huh. Go ahead and let God deal with you. Just keep saying yes. Keep saying yes to him, no matter what he asks of you. Just keep saying yes, because he's going to be leading you into a new place, a deeper place, a greater place, a higher place, a place that's closer to his heart, closer to him, closer that's that's what these young people are after is the presence of God. They yeah. just want to be close to Jesus. And that's what I want. Even though I've been walking in this walk for many, many years, I just want more. And when I went to Asbury University, it's because I wanted more. I didn't just want to see what was going on. Mm-hmm. I wanted more of Jesus. And you can have that today. You can have more of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I know from years of experience that if you just start talking about revival, it begins to stir something on the inside. And Lord, I believe that this listener is is feeling that stirring on the inside. Father, I ask you that you give these listeners your great grace to say yes to you and to come to you closer and to say yes to you and to surrender things that don't belong in their lives, 
Just like you've been putting your finger on things in me. I'm saying yes to you. I give it to you. I give you this. I give you that. Lord, I want you to have all of me 100% right now. Lord, let that be the prayer in the heart of these listeners, Lord. We want you right now, Jesus. We give you ourselves right now, 100%. Pour out your spirit in our hearts, Lord. Transform us. Fill us with your fire. Fill our hearts with your fire, Lord Jesus. Fill our hearts with your fire. Your heart is present in our heart, Lord. And your heart is burning with passion for the lost. Your heart is burning with passion for the harvest. Lord, we ask you to increase our love for you by getting lost in your love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the podcasting platform suggest this podcast to other listeners who are also looking for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Check out our website at globaloutpouring.org to find out more information, read our blogs, connect with us, and donate. You can also browse our web store for life-changing anointed books. Until next time, This is Sharon Buss. And I'm Philip Buss. God bless you with his overwhelming, loving presence.